Okay, looks like we are live. What's up, everybody? Tanner Larson here, along with my good buddy, old pal, and business partner, work wife, all those good things, Matthew Stafford. What we've done in the past is, uh, through our Ecom Insider Group, we do a lot of anatomy breakdowns and where we go out and dissect uh, successful stores, unsuccessful stores, and a whole bunch of different things. What we've found, though, is that uh, some of the biggest stores on the market, people, the ones people think, man, I wish I could build a store as good as that, or I wish I could do this, they're broken six ways from Sunday, and they're successful in spite of themselves. So what we decided to do was start to take on some of these stores and critique them in the way that uh, Build, Grow, Scale does when we work with our Amplify partner clients and when we actually do it to our own brands, the way we really dial in on what's wrong, what's working, what needs to be fixed, and how we really get a store into those five, six, seven, eight, and even 10% conversion rates, okay? Um, speaking of conversion rates, while we're getting things going real quick, looks like people are hopping on. Um, the industry average for e-com conversion rates is around one and a half to two percent. Okay, it's been that way for a long time. Then it started climbing a little bit, not so much industry average, but specifically Shopify averages. People were getting up as high as three percent conversion rates, right? And that was like the top end of the stores. Everybody else was in that one percent or less range. Lots of stores are still in the less than a one percent range. However, um, with what we do at Build Grow Scale, we've established a new normal. It's actually pretty freaky, okay? Because the new normal for us starts at around four and a half percent, okay? And from there, it can, get, I mean, it can get as high as as double digit conversions. Now, depends on the average order value, the the price point of the product, the type of traffic, all kinds of things. They're saying they're echoing. Oh, that's probably because maybe because of my computer. Yeah. Okay, mine's off. Are we still yeah. echoey? I mean, let me. We should be good now. Okay. Good now. No, I still hear an echo. Hang on, guys. Let me plug my headset back and make sure it's not. I can hear it. Yeah, me too. Better? Did the echo go away? Cool. Okay, so what I was saying is like that's kind of established the new normal and that through what we call revenue optimization, okay, which is not to be confused with conversion rate optimization, but revenue optimization. Wow, Christina, you're just going to walk in while we're live on a call? Seriously, if you guys know Christina, you know she just lost her job, like straight up. And she brought me coffee. And she brought him coffee, so she's double fired. Um, but anyway, uh, we, we have, we've kind of coined a concept called revenue optimization in where we actually focus on optimizing the revenue throughout the whole store, which encompasses the entire customer journey, the entire buyer's journey, and optimizes the site all the way through. Now, when it comes to, or actually I should say, what differentiates this with conversion rate optimization, Matt, why don't you take a stab at that one and kind of just explain the difference and why we don't focus on that. Well revenue or conversion rate optimization is literally just one of the levers or one of the metrics that we look at in order to optimize the revenue on a store because you can literally lower your price and that will raise your conversion but that doesn't do you any good you, you the whole goal is to make more money like when you optimize your site it's not to uh, have a number that makes you feel warm and fuzzy, it's in order to make money. You want to put money in your pocket, right? Like the, the end of the day, the only thing that matters is how much you actually keep in your pocket when all is said and done. Most of the time, conversion rate optimization as a, as a standard, you know, generic practice leaves you with less money. You may have a higher conversion, but you have less money. Whereas we approach it from a holistic standpoint of how do we build this business and optimize this business from A to Z so that the revenue is maximized, which when you maximize revenue and you focus on that, you're also maximizing customer, lifetime value, retention rate, all that stuff. Everything is getting improved. And um, it's a very uh, very uh, systematic and targeted approach. We don't just throw shit at a wall and go all over the place. We very systematically go through every aspect of a site. And you know, when we do a site audit on a store, I mean, they, those things wind up like, what, 15, 20, 30 pages sometimes? Yeah, depending on how bad it is. And then also, uh, a lot of times people want to start right where their page starts or where their experience starts with a customer. We actually go backwards. So we'll start at the checkout, then go to the cart, 
and yeah, go to great product page. So explain page. why though. Why do we start in reverse order from everybody else? Everybody else works front to back and we work back to front. Um, the reason being is, uh, again, revenue optimization. We want to capture the most amount of money per store. And so if we make the homepage work really well and then they drop off at the product page, um, none of that homepage wor improvement. improvement works until the product page is improved. And if you improve the product page, none of that works until your cart works correctly. So rather than get all these people to the cart where then they fall off or to the checkout where then they fall off, we go backwards, we fix the checkout. And that way, anything that we do on the store, you're maximizing what you get um, rather than going the opposite way and literally creating a bottleneck at your worst point. Yeah, that's a great example. So the, um, as we said, revenue optimization is what we do. It's, it's really the, what Build, Grow, Scale does. And the focus on revenue optimization and the way we do it, which I'll talk about in a little bit, is kind of what's made Build, Grow, Scale become what we call the 800 pound gorilla um, in, in the e-commerce space. Uh, you know, Matt and I have put together a team of, what are we at, 17, 18? Yeah, it's close to that. Yeah, 17 or 18 revenue optimization experts and developers that do nothing all day long except for focus on revenue optimization across a wide range of sites, including ours, client sites. And we're, we're talking about, you know, tens of thousands of sales a day, hundreds of thousands of dollars of ad spend a day, millions of visitors a day, where we're able to test ridiculous amounts of data and split tests and all these different things over large segments of data, not like a, people do a split test with, a, with you know, 100 clicks. We do 1,000 sales, right? And we can do that multiple times a day across sites, across a whole wide range of industries. So when we find something that works, we take it across and we apply it to all these different sites, all these different industries, all these different product categories to see what really works. And our ability to dive into the data and really pull out what's in there has allowed us to do this stuff. Now, I always say yeah. a, a rising tide raises all ships. So essentially, mm -hmm. you know, being on the back end of these stores with very smart business owners and they have budgets to test, um, we have them looking, or they're constantly looking at their business, looking at new apps, looking at other sites, getting ideas. They bring them back to us and we implement or test those on their store. And when we find a win, then we have that ability to go put it on multiple other ones. Like we're in supplements, we're in um, apparel, clothing, we're in drinkware, we're in um, fresh breath. <laughs> yeah, fresh breath. Like it literally doesn't all over matter. The so the, the nice thing about that is TV shows, apparel, all everybody kinds of always stuff. says, oh, that, that works for them or that wouldn't work in my industry. But uh, we're able to see this across multiple ones and take the best of best of each and apply that to what we're doing. Now guys, the reason that we're, this isn't like a bragging session or anything like that, but we're trying to set the stage in terms of letting you understand where we're coming from. Because what we're about to do is we're about to go in and we're going to rip apart one of the, actually the number one most successful eyewear company on Shopify called Diff Eyewear. They're a very successful company and they're a great company. They're not a bad company by any means. However, we're gonna rip apart their store and when we start explaining things to you, we want you to know that everything we're talking about is coming from the data and the experience that we have. Now, with that said, everything we, that we are saying is wrong or needs to be fixed or optimized, these are coming from, like I said, from all of our experience. And it's like, these are things that we would be immediately testing on this site. Matt and I and our team does nothing to a site without data. Okay, so the first thing we do when we come into a site is we are going to set up Google Analytics correctly. We're gonna use Google Tag Manager to tag the entire site, every single aspect of it, so that we can collect data, and then we can actively test all these different things. In this case, we're public facing on Diff Eyewear, so we don't have access to their data, okay? So what we're doing is we're taking all the best practices, all the things that we know that we immediately would do on a public facing site like this, now, we would say, hey, these are the things we want to fix, okay, but Matt and I would not actually go fix these on this site until we actually had access to their data and could confirm and test based off what we wanted to change, okay? So, it's, we don't ever do any kind of blind optimization because that's not optimizing. That is throwing shit at a wall and hoping something sticks. Or that's thinking we know everything. Correct. And really, most of the time. Um, How many times do you think we just, lose out of, every t out of our tests? Um, more than 50% now. The, the more optimized the site gets, the more and more tests that you uh, test that are wrong. And it's always the thing that we are like, this is going to win. Oh, yeah. 
and then, and then it doesn't. There's so, lots of money yeah, we're, that money on in the beginning. And we would have lost a, l a lot of money. Yeah, I don't so, um, so anyway, what we want to do today is like we did this before on uh, Kylie Jenner's site, on her Kylie Cosmetics site, which is approaching a billion dollars and also is so broken, it, it hurts for us to look at it because we're like, man, she could be triple or quadruple even where she's at if we could just fix her site. And diff eyewear is honestly, it's no different. And there's actually a I don't even know what the connection is, but isn't there a connection between um, like she's endorsed diff or? Uh, no, her sister has Chloe. Oh, Chloe yeah, has. Okay, so yeah. some famous person or whatever. But uh, diff has some cool stuff in terms of you know they're big on the charity side. They donate eye exams and reading glasses, and they do a buy one give one program, and they've done really well. Okay, um, and they are the number one store on Shopify for eyewear. Yeah, I actually um, went back and forth on an email with the owner. Um, he's a super nice guy. Mm -hmm. So just, none of this is to like make fun of the site. It's nope. just it's easier for us to pick ones um, that are big that everyone would make an assumption. Is this that, site's perfect? That this stuff is done. Well, and that's a good point. What do people? What do, what do we find out all of like our members doing when they come before they come to us? How they're creating their optimizations? Yeah, they they look at other sites and assume assume, which is a, a terrible word, but they do. They assume that they must be going through this stuff or they must know what's right and wrong and what's working. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is most of the time they have a very good product. They know how to run ads or, or they have a, they have some sort of media that's working. It doesn't mean that they know how to optimize their site. And uh, what we found is that works for them, but for 99% of the other people, it doesn't work because they don't own that media or they don't have that channel mm -hmm. to get the, exposure and so when they try to run ads to their store that looks like that store um, it fails it fails it's, it has nothing to do with what's actually working for that other brand yes and and you know we work with a ton of stores I mean big stores fortune 100 stores you know ridiculously sized things all the way down to smaller stores okay but the thing is not a single store have we ever worked with or consulted on or even approached or had come to us has had it all figured out in terms of their optimization. Most of them, they focus on everything but the store, okay? Product, traffic, supply chain, ads. And they think those are the things they, that are yeah, broken. They think those are the things that, they, if I, man, we can't grow. If we could just get better at traffic. Yeah. When they're ignoring the number one asset in their business at this point is the store besides the customer, right? And the store, if you just optimized your store, everything else in your business gets easier yeah, because traffic's cheaper. Store, we yeah. break their supply chains. Yeah, every time, yeah. right? Yeah, um, Corey and Keegan, some of our clients, uh, these guys, we, what, we break it four times this year? Three or, four. Three or four times this year. They'd be a couple million a month, more than they are, if we hadn't kept breaking their supply chain because everything just worked too well. So enough of the setting the stage and everything else, but we wanted to give you an idea of where we're coming from. Rem understand that we're coming from a data perspective on all this stuff, and let's go ahead and pull up diff eyewear let's take a look at it and let me uh, you actually you know what you should open yours um and see bring up the, the facebook feed so we can make sure that everybody's seeing this okay all right let me share my screen so what do i watch just just watch that just keep your sound off this part yep and then you can see the, the comments and but we, you'll see what they're doing okay so Cool. All right. You guys should all be able to see us right now. Can you, you should be seeing Google. Okay. So I, I pulled it up this way um, because I wanted to see what happens when we click on through something that they're running an ad to as and paid traffic. So we're going to spend a little bit of their money right now. Um, hopefully they watch this because they'll definitely get their money's worth out of it. So we're landing on diff eyewear now. And the first thing that happens before I even have seen the site is a pop-up, right? And not only is it a pop-up, but it's a pop-up saying, hey, get a discount, all right? You wanna talk about why this is a terrible idea? Well, first thing they're doing is saying, hey, the, what we have our, our eyewear priced at is- uh, It's actually overpriced, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not accurate, because before you, you haven't done anything to, you haven't done anything to deserve a discount, and- I haven't uh, even seen the product yet. Right, the other part is you're literally interrupting the buying cycle. So when they come to your page, they came there for a reason to see a product, and of course, people are gonna go, oh yeah, I want 15% off, but in your head, what you've done is you've already said, um, my site isn't worth you paying the price that I have on my, that I've marked everything at. Yeah, you're telling people basically, like you said, 
hey, everything on my site is 50, at least 15% overpriced because you haven't even let me see the product yet and you're already telling me here's a discount because there's like a lack of confidence or whatever there. We understand the reasoning behind it. It's just, it's the wrong reasoning. And yeah. it actually, what, what you think it's doing is not what it's doing in your customer's head. Yeah, what I, I say, you need to serve information to your customer at the right, at the right time. Yeah. And this is not the right time. So at the moment, this person's not a buyer, they're a browser. So we would treat them different than we would treat a buyer. Um, and you want to let them browse. If they decide to leave, we totally agree with exit, exit mm -hmm. intent pop-ups. Mm -hmm. But until that point, like let them go through the process. Why, why, why interrupt that? This is literally a spot for them to go. Oh God, another pop-up and just leave the site. Yeah. It's going to keep your bounce rate way higher than it needs to be. Right. Yep. Yeah. All right, so obviously we say this is not a great idea, um, and we'll talk more about other things in a second, but okay, so here's what you see above the fold. All right, let me make sure I'm only at 100%. Okay, I'm at 100% zoom. So this is what you see on a normal laptop screen. Um, oh, yeah, it looks right here. Okay. We're just not on our screen. We it see kind it of way. gets yeah. weird. So anyway, um, you want to take a stab at it right quick? Um, well, what you see above the fold. Yeah, I would just say that there's not a unique value proposition here. So there's not like what is their um, unique value proposition to their customer. You know, they have one that's coming soon. Um, this is probably not the right place to show it. Yeah, you can't even see who it is. So nope. you'd have to scroll to know who it is. So the imaging is wrong. Um, and these banners, so one's a back in stock, one's a coming soon. Neither one of these things is really set up to opt to, to make money, right? right? I mean, the if back you in stock. back down, like you don't know, like most people are not gonna know who that is. No, I, I, I don't. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we, we've got, so first of all, the above the fold, just like on a reg, any other website, you're above the fold space, we call it gold, right? Because it's the most valuable space on your site. And this is not being utilized. You got this mat, it's just almost as bad as having a slider image. You got this geez, two giant images. It's 90% of their real estate. Correct, which are not driving people to the next place they need to go. Coming soon, I mean, unless you're really trying to push a pre-sale, then that's not the best thing. Thing. I'd rather be showing you what you have in stock, what your, what your best sellers are, what you can buy, right? And that should always be above the fold. The whole point of this homepage is not to, not, and actually is, is not to actually get a sale right now. You're just trying to f move them further into their, the, the customer journey to where they need to be to be able to make an informed decision as to, uh, yes, I want to buy or where the products are that I'm looking for. Yeah, the homepage has two, two, um, two main purposes. One, to build trust and Two is to give them easy navigation to what they're looking for. So they've done a decent job with the menu. It's simple. Um, it's pretty uh, um, clear. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to click on the feature, it's going to be whatever they're featuring at that time. And then when you hover over the sunglasses portion, it shows the multiple different styles that they have. Which, so I'm not really sure the difference between sunglasses and styles. Um, Oh, shape. Yeah. So, um, so one's an endorsed and one's a, yeah, but so, still it's, yeah, so it, I think it that's works a good really. idea. Yeah. So in, sure. in this case though, if you look at this, we got styles, it's a lot of styles and then you've got a whole lot of different, uh, uh influencers, are, influencers yeah. right? So one thing that's not, that should be emphasized here. That's not is search, right? They've got a lot of product here. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things that we found is, well, first of all, let's talk about icons your customers aren't necessarily smart enough to know what the icon is. Yeah, they, we, don't, they don't know. So I'm um, click on uh, make it mobile uh, because we always do this right away. Cause most of your track is going to come from mobile. I mean, yeah. we'll pick on the desktop one today just cause it'll be easier for everybody to see. But if you look at the size of their icons on mobile, it's super tiny mm -hmm. and they're not labeled. So a lot of people, are not going to understand that that little hamburger over there um, means the menu. So you click on the menu, it's going to open up. Um, they have done a good job of actually up minimizing menu. the ones that aren't as important and, and bolding the ones that are. So that's a, they did good there. Um, and then also the cart should be labeled. And for sure, uh, search is your most valuable traffic on your site. Um, we found an average uh, that they're about three and a half to four times more valuable than any other visitor. 
So um, a good example on a site that we uh, that we are partners with, uh, they do one and a half to two million a month, and about seven percent of their visitors use the search, and it's about twenty one or twenty two percent of their uh, revenue right now. So seven percent of the people who hit the site search. That seven percent of those that buy is over twenty percent of their revenue. Yeah. So that's how important search is. Now, is search important for every site? No. Depends on how many products you have, right? Yeah, we usually say any any more than four, um, you definitely want search. And and, um, and this is we don't mean we mean emphasize search. You want to explain yeah, the difference? Yeah. Yep. So you would literally give them. I mean, if you go to Amazon, and they're not, I don't think they're a great example for all. But they do all have a big search bar. But they have a search bar that goes all the way across the top, so that you can use it like a search engine. Your site should be that same way, especially when you have lots of options. You want the customer to be able to find what they want as easy as possible. Like that's what your page is, that's what your store is for, is to one, um, make it super simple, and then find what they're looking for so that they can buy. So why hide that, especially when that's your most valuable customer? The other thing that I see up here is they have account, account logins. Um, if you have accounts on your store, um, it means that they're a regular user and you're gonna send them back through email, do different types of promotion messenger. Uh, put the link in the footer. They're happy to go to it. it does not need to be in the header. Yeah, you, um, we use a fancy term, but it just means it takes a lot more thinking. The more stuff that you put on your site, the more things your person has to look at or your customer has to look at and process in order to make a decision to figure out where they want to go. So they don't know what that little icon means. We know it means uh, customer login and it's in the way, um, definitely in the way of them going to a cart. So those are things that you would want to remove or clean up, make it a little bit easier for your, for your clients. So on the homepage, going back to that, no, actually, let me just elaborate on that one more point. So he's talking about emphasizing search, getting rid of the uh, account things. These aren't guesses, guys. These are backed by data, millions and millions of dollars of ad spend, lots of split tests, and also customer recordings and all the things like that. We hot jar and heat mapping and everything. That yeah, these ones win every time. Every single time. Like the, these are these are just the basics of, of of real optimization. The thing is, is your homepage also needs a very clear call to action. They're coming here because they want to buy sunglasses, right? They want to look for sunglasses or see what you've got. So coming with this this Becca and the Beck. Becky and Becca, okay, that's kind of odd too. But anyway, you got those two, you're taking up huge, huge amounts of space. And then down here, you've got your featured collections. Well, if, if I'm just, you know, browsing or I'm on mobile or whatever, I have to go through both of these huge profile shots before I get to anything. It would make a whole lot more sense to have your featured collections right up above the fold, right? This is how the page should load, right? Maybe yeah. like that, if, perfect. If, if I don't know who those two people are, um, I'm going to go look and who knows, maybe then I'm going to go see who she is on the internet to see why she's even popular. Mm -hmm. um, all that stuff is a distraction. So literally it would be better to show this, have the glasses and then their name by it. So you can right away make a choice based off a of style. Yeah, I mean like and right off the bat, we can, we know that Matt would be wearing the Demi Lovato's. For like sure. Th that little pointy thingy. I mean, that, that's and that color too is. Yeah, it calls it, to me. It calls yeah. to him. Yeah. You know, I'd go for more of the, the rounds, the steampunk rounds or something like that, you know, for sure. But th at least this way we can make our choice. And, you know, as two different customers, we can get where we want to get faster. Okay. And it's very clear when you do this what you're asking us to do. You're asking us to pick the style that we are interested in learning more about. And your eyes are naturally going to go towards what you favor. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than having to search through those two people, get distracted, maybe go to Facebook or see why they're popular, like I said, instead right here, it's going to be super easy for me to go, oh, I like that style, and, and then go through that process where I'm going to get to a product page a lot quicker. We also um, do things called click debt, which means the more clicks that you cause your customer to use, the less chance of them uh, making it all the way to through the purchase. So. Uh, if, if you look at your buying cycles, the majority of people buy stuff while they're at work. Um, they browse and do all that stuff at night, but they literally buy while they're at work. So what happens when you're at work and you're 
you're wasting time going through all that other stuff before you get to the purchase cycle and your boss walks up or your business partner or whatever and you go, oh, yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing this, I should be working. You close it and then the chances of you coming back are slim. Mm -hmm. um, all, those, all those things matter um, and it doesn't just show in your conversion rate, it's in optimizing your entire site. All right, so we keep going, shop all collections, and then we come down here to, um, I don't know what these are. Um, um, different people. Different people, yeah, okay, and then you people. got the, the buy one, give one in action. This is their, this is their, their charity thing, which is amazing. Um, it's really cool what they do, but that should be, you got it right here. Should be higher up. Should be higher up, right under the featured collections. And instead of doing, you know, you've got this privately designed in Los Angeles, blah, 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 blah. This could be where their video is, along with that sentence, right up underneath the featured collections. Um, instead, of, instead of these, because you've got it over there, but it, would, it makes more sense to emphasize, because this is their, what's unique about their glasses, aside from the fact that they're influencer-based and things like that, and, you know, cost and whatnot, but it's really awesome. And people are going to buy things anyway, but if they can buy things and serve their selfish need first and at the same time do a good deed, yeah. they're much more inclined to do that, which is why it's great to pair your company with uh, a charity or an organization or something like that. So this well, is really good for them. What you're actually doing is you're building rapport mm -hmm. um, because you don't have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with your customer. Your site is literally your conversation with them. So you can use your site to build that rapport. Um, one thing I did notice when I went to their charity and about diff, um, what I felt like it was it, there's a big disconnect for me when I went to this because literally what they're doing, um, oh, maybe this is different now. Literally, just since I uh, clicked on it, why did that do that? Well, this is this is their uh, up top link. Was it a different link you clicked? Yeah, I went to their charity. Um, or did you click on this learn more? No, go to the charity about again. Just click on it. Oh, I went to our story. Okay, so the charity about us is good. Um, for, I clicked on the our story right there. And I felt like this, this is like an about us. And uh, really what happened here, the disconnect that I felt was um, they were trying to sell me before they were trying to actually explain um, how they make a difference. So if you scroll down through it, um, people buy from people. And so literally, um, it would be good to have like real people there. Maybe And they actually have a good story. I, I read their story on Forbes um, about the, the partners who joined up who are actually competitors beforehand and like how they decided they wanted to make a difference with their ch donations and stuff like that. That's a story that should be here. Yes. They already understand that they're influencer driven and there's all these beautiful people that wear their sunglasses. But uh, what, pe what people don't realize is that the Our Story, the About Us page is actually one of the most trafficked and visited pages on a website and can make or break a sale. Yeah, they didn't go here to see more influencers. They literally went here because they wanted to know more about the brand. And uh, so literally they go through this whole process here of why it's a good idea to buy from them. And then they talk about farther down about the good deeds they do. So really the good deeds should be first, how they, Who they are came about and then you know, our competitive differences based on price right. and all that because stuff. they can find all that other stuff when they're going through the shopping experience here. They literally clicked on something. They want to know about the company itself, not be sold again and again before they get to the reason why they clicked on that type of a link. Let's go back to the homepage real quick. We're almost done with the homepage wrap up. So we'll come back down here. So the Instagram thing is cool, um, it, especially in their case. It, it's, it's a lot of social proof. It's a lot of credibility. It also drives in a fair amount of sales. Um, if your brand lends itself and you're good on Instagram, then use it. Um, however, if you're not good on Instagram, then it actually can hurt your site more than help it. Yeah, um, yeah we actually, um, before it was shoppable on a couple of our sites, we tracked it. And we were certainly sending a lot of people off the site into the mm -hmm. social environment. It was a distraction. Um, now that it's shoppable, we do use it on several sites, and uh, it drives quite a few sales. Correct. And it, but I mean, the, the distinction there is they have to have their Insta game has to be on point. Yeah, right. For they, sure. You can't be a, a half-ass Instagrammer. Yeah. Um, and your product has to lend itself to Instagram, obviously. Yeah. Um, another thing here is Matt alluded to it is once you've got them on your site. 
the last thing you want to do is give them an excuse to go anywhere else. That's why you don't have the join us on or join our Facebook page or, or you know, go follow us on Twitter. You don't have any of these social links um, visible. Okay, so you can shop right off. You can shop right off it, yeah. yeah. Uh, because you don't want to send them anywhere else. You've got them here. Now your job is to get them to convert, okay, or opt in for a, you know, a discount or something, some kind of capture so that you can maximize your return on investment of what it costs you to get the person to your site. Click on the shop now link. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. So this is good. It doesn't take them anywhere else. It keeps them on board and you know they can do their shopping right on the site. All right. And then down here at the bottom, they've got all their extra stuff down here in the footer, which is a good place and it's not emphasized. Um, some of the stuff we would do it differently. Um, one of the big things we would do differently is the opt-in. Nobody wants to sign up to get spammed. So, and, and not, nobody wants to be submitted. So, um, literally the reason uh, we changed this, um, you could probably, do you wanna go to one of our sites sure. to show them? Go to Breathbox. Let's give you an idea of how our footer looks different. Just for the simple fact that most people don't look at um, a footer as a place where you can make sales, and ours happens to make a lot of sales. So here, we give them a reason to sign up. We're gonna give them something immediately um, for giving us that email. It's not, hey, sign up so that we can send you uh, sales messages. It's here, enter your email to receive a 10% coupon immediately. Um, we use this on all of our sites and it works on everyone. It does not matter what the industry is. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, we found that by putting these different collections down at the bottom, they also get clicked on and the conversion rate on those is higher than anywhere else on our site. So that person won, they've entered their email, they get their coupon immediately, so you could probably do that real quick. And you're thinking, oh, he's giving me a fake coupon. Doesn't matter, as or, as fake, or a fake e email, because I'm still gonna get the re real email when they buy. But if you look what just happened, we didn't send them somewhere to get a coupon code, we delivered it to them right there on the page. So they didn't have to leave the site, go check their email, confirm that they wanted to get an email, and, and then get this code and then have to come back and remember it. Literally what happened is we gave them the code right here and now they can click on one of the products and then use that code, go through the buying experience and it works very, very well. Yep. So, so and the, you know the other thing, back, going back to Diff, um, you know how many sites we look at? I mean, you do, but like you guys don't. They don't even hook this up. Yeah. They don't even have it connected to an autoresponder. It's just default in their footer and it's sitting there. And most of it says subscribe to get our newsletter. It's just the default. Yeah. And they don't use it anyway. No. So people don't sign up for this. But so that's why they don't even. In our it. case, uh, that exact coupon on one of our client sites uh, since December 5th of last year is worth 160 something thousand dollars in sales at a 50 ish dollar average order value. Yeah, that's the only place that we put the W10 coupon. Yeah, when we track all of our different codes and everything, and we track who buys and what they buy, their average order value, their retention rate, their repeat customer rate. The conversion rate is off of this up then. It's significantly higher. Okay, so now we've just done the home page. Hopefully you guys are, are like kind of having a, a light bulb moment of like how you approach e-commerce. It's This is a totally different way of doing e-commerce. This is a holistic approach to e-com, which is what's needed if you want to build a true e-com business in today's, you know, competitive marketplace. So we'll go check out Matt's. We'll go into the collection first. We'll work our way um, here. And we're going to, like Matt said earlier, we normally work from the back to the front in terms of applying optimizations, but we still, when we, you know, analyze a site, we still go through it the same way a customer does. So we see the flow in the same order that they see it. So we can spot disconnects and things like that. So even right here, I think that the, the, what was causing that menu to drop down like that? I have no idea. Maybe I was up there. I don't know. How can, okay. Maybe, yeah, let's go be, back. Maybe I, I was. I don't think that's a good idea at all. So I clicked. Okay, it must have been me. Because it's not, not coming up now. But still, I don't think that this is a very good. No, this, this is a, not a good landing. This is a terrible all. conversion pa or uh, collections page. So again, you're wasting the most val valuable, the valuable real estate with a not, not even a clear look at the sunglasses. Yeah. Right, and, and the Demi, cool, wonderful. 
could that text could be this big? Yeah, I, I just clicked, clicked on Udemy. Yes. So really, literally, what you're doing is you're forcing them to make another choice before they can see what they even want to do. One, you're going to, have to scroll to to look at yep. the but, different you know, colors. A good point here. Uh, there's a big difference between beauty and art and conversion. Yeah, yeah for sure. And this is a, a site designer made this pretty and charged a, charged them a lot of money and said, "Hey, how gorgeous is our is your new site?" And they're like, "Man, this is gorgeous." That site designer has not a clue nor a care in terms of conversion. Yeah, we call it function over form. Yeah. So literally, um, they're worried more about the look rather than how well, it functions. Well, you know what? I'm curious. I wonder if if they get rid of it. Let's check it on mobile. Oh. It's better on mobile. Yep, for sure. I mean, it, but that's not really how it should be on desktop. Still at this point though, they don't have enough information to make a decision, so they're forcing another click. Where if they went to, um, if they went from the other page, go ahead and click on one of these and see if it brings up the Which color page. do you like? Uh, purple, it's my favorite. Or gunmetal gray, they call that. I so, thought it was purple. Yeah, so see if they brought them to the product page here and then gave them a variant of the different color choices, which they do. Which they do. Um, why would you not drive them here first where then they can get all the information they want about it and if they want to see another color, they just click here. So this goes back to click that. Like literally they forced them to go to that other page that literally provides no value. And they're all the same collection and they're all available on the product page, the entire collection. Yeah, so it didn't provide any value. It literally forced in, in another click. So um, in our case, we would delete that page completely. Yep, yep. We just wouldn't use it. Yep. So because so you, you've down. got them all right here. Yep, scroll down. All right. And check images. Okay. Yeah, the thumbnails are okay. Not sure that too many. Yeah, there's definitely too many. Like they don't need to see two different ways that she's wearing them. She, she's, um, a, she's the same person. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is uh, we've noticed or we've noticed we've tested um, a million times that uh, tabs work very well on this on the product page because basically instead of you forcing them to read through all your information because if you go to see more literally it just it gives them more information instead of the information that they choose to see so now if they want to know what your shipping and returns is how do you figure that out because obviously you're going to spend 80 90 dollars on a pair of sunglasses you're going to order them online you don't know if you like them i want to know if they're not correct uh, how do i get them back so go see if you can figure out where you would go to figure out what their shipping and return policy is. Um, it's not here anywhere. Right. Track and order, that, but yeah, there's no. So now as the reason, the reason why people won't buy from you is one, they have questions that they need answered, or two, um, they don't trust you. So the fact that they have to go look for it to figure out what your shipping and return is, you've already lessened their trust in you. Instead of you going, hey, this is what our shipping and returns is, just click on the tab and we put it right here, easy for you to find. Instead, he had to scroll through the whole, all the way down to the bottom of the page, figure out um, which button to click, then go to it, and then literally they give them a whole other set of selections. Um, By tabs, we're talking about this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they don't have to have a lot of information in them, but it allows the customer to get what they need right right here. And they don't have to read through everything that you do in order to find what's important to them. So if, if you put all your information on that page, you literally have to make them go find it. Why not make it super simple? Not everybody consumes information the same way. So if shipping and returns is important to them, that particular client can just click that button. If the product description, they want to know how heavy it is. Are they metal? Are they like some sort of uh, different type of plastic? Or I don't even know if you call it plastic, but the different materials that composite. Or material. Yeah, composite. Yeah, um, people that want to know that and know the details. Like you give them information that's available or that's going to help them make a buying decision, um, and you make it easy for them.
the one thing that they do have really good right here is uh, they have all their reviews. Um, that's super nice um, that they have the reviews um, above the add to cart. Is anyone else having trouble with noise? Is our sound okay, guys? I mean, Christina says we're echoing, but um, we shouldn't be. You know what's echoing? It's your microphone, Christina. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, we just want to make sure that you guys can hear us. Yep. Guys. So another thing here, guys, is think about, you know, we're talking about product descriptions and making the information accessible. And the, one of the examples we use all the time, but it's, it's, a, it's a great way to, you know, make it click for people is when you go to Amazon, you do a search for a product, you find a picture of a product that you like, you click on it, you read the little bullet points, you're excited, you think this is perfect, and then you, have, you scroll down to the product description and it says, you know, made in Japan and that's it, or assembled in the US, but it doesn't give you any additional information. And what happens? Well, you go, hmm. And then you go back to the search and you look again, right? Because they did not give you the enough information to make a buying decision, even though you're on Amazon and you're more trusting, but they didn't answer your questions in the spot that they should have. Okay, so instead you left and you went and bought a different product that answered your question more fully. So in this case, it's the same thing. The more you do to, you know, put yourself in the buyer's shoes and answer every, any question that they would have that would, you know, preclude them from, you know, buying or not buying, right? You want to basically make, give them the information to make the right decision for them, whether that is a purchase or not, right? The other thing is the FAQs, right? Yeah. The only reason that you have an FAQ is because you didn't do a good enough job of in putting the information where the customer needs it. And you're having customer support issues because you're, you're not addressing that to the customer when they need it. So instead, they have to go to an FAQ and you have to create one to alleviate and take advantage or to, to solve, I should say, that problem, which it actually comes back to the fact that you don't give them the information that they need where they need it. I have, yeah, I have two problems with FAQs. One, first, think of the name. It's a frequently asked question. So if that's the case, then you, it's telling you that your site is not answering that for the customer. What is the reason people don't buy? They have questions that don't get answered. So if that is a frequently asked question, you should use that as a site analysis to actually go fix your site so that it's not being asked over and over and over. The other thing is, the second thing that I, problem that I have with FAQs is most of them are not frequently asked questions. The owner builds it off of, um, what am I going to use this? I'm going to put a question there and then use it as a sales tool. And people see through that right away. They go, oh, yeah, he's just trying to sell me again. Like, I want to know what real people are asking um, about this. And it's, it's super obvious which ones are real questions and which ones are the site owner trying to just use it as another spot to sell you. The truth of the matter is like, you'll build more trust by putting the questions that you're your site owner or the site visitors actually ask and given an answer to it, same as you will with reviews. Like one of the things that works really, really well with reviews is to include the comments with them or the questions and answers in your reviews. People read those. They use that to make a buying decision. And well, go back, go back a page because so I actually just saw something that I really want to okay. point out. If you're gonna have this page on your site. I mean, sorry, this one. Either one of these. Okay. Um, do you notice something that they forgot here? They don't even have the reviews that Showing on the, they would yeah. show, which is another trust symbol, another reason, or something that's very, very um, instrumental in getting conversions. So you go to the page, it says 127 reviews. Those should be showing on your category. Those should be showing everywhere. Color, yeah. Like everywhere that you have an opportunity. And it is to good. At least classes. their Amazon look. Yeah. Th that's good. Yep. Um, what the other thing that what I was checking that is not good is this limited stock fire symbol. It's fake. Okay. It doesn't. It, I mean, it's one thing if 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 it at least changes numbers, but 24 people and 10 recently purchased is the same on everything I check. I check three different styles of, of the glasses. It doesn't change. Okay. So. People aren't stupid, guys. I mean, we, we say, hey, they may not be smart enough to know what the icons mean. That doesn't mean that they're stupid consumers, okay? And they know that all you're trying to do is do some false scarcity here and push them into a sale. And while it may increase your conversions, it yeah. actually hurts yeah. your, your – see, here's the thing. Most stores only look at their front-end metrics, 
okay? But those metrics really are not important for the long game. The real metrics that are important are all your back-end metrics, okay? Things like your customer satisfaction, your repeat customer rate, your lifetime customer value. Even customers have come back and Correct. buy from you three, but four, or five, six times. This doesn't we instill that. have brands that do that. Um, we have, well, with Anton, like they're mm -hmm. a good brand. Like they have literally um, purchasers. Like I go through their email and started creating segments like people who bought more than four, people who bought more than five, people who bought more than six. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, holy cow. It just keeps people going. People bought more than seven. They have people that bought more than 12 times from them. Like that's a brand. Like that's not someone that uses any type of scarcity, doesn't use any type of discounts. And scarcity you know, is fine though, right? If you use it correctly. Yeah, yeah. If it's true scarcity. Yeah. This is just, this is like the, the shady t-shirt stuff where it's like, hey, 99 out of 100 sold, hurry, buy now, four minutes and 37 seconds left. And the bummer part is like, they don't need this it. is a good brand. It's a very they good brand. They don't need to do stuff like this. They can literally, um, they can literally play the long game and they will win. Well, and if they got rid of that and they optimized the rest of the pages, their conversion rate would go up still, not well, down. The other thing, too, is it would move their Add to Cart button up because it's literally above their Add to Cart, not below it, um, which is a terrible. You don't want anything above your Add to Cart, but, especially but the not something like selectors. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another thing, speaking of Add to Cart, is the black. Like, it's okay, but... We, we found that, you know, putting something a little bit brighter in place. Now, color, color is honestly not as important as, as you may think, but the thing is, is their whole site is black, yeah. so right? We, what we use, we use a term, it's called hierarchy of focus. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do your eyes naturally go to on this page? Here, the purple of the glasses, I mean, you're going to look there first. But the fact that the add to cart blends with the title, the price, the menu, all that other stuff, you literally want the hierarchy of focus to be the next most important action that you want your customer to take. Which in this case is, is clicking the add to cart button. Right. So that should stand out and be different than any other color on the page. Yep. And then we also use an arrow indicator or an icon because what we found is what you're doing here is you're, you're leading the person to the next step. Okay. But the, the more you can do that subconsciously without any um, cognitive load on their part, any active thought process, the better. We're trained in life to know what the next step is, like follow the arrow, go this way. So by adding an arrow or the cart icon or things like that that people are used to seeing, it's a subconscious thing. It requires no cognitive load on their part to know what the next step is. And when that's the case, they're more likely to take it, all right? And in this case, it's click that button. Now, again, everything we're saying here is backed by tons and tons of data. We're not just you know spewing off random shit. This is all things that 100% work. and you know, we've tested it every single different way. We're constantly testing it still. Yeah, we've tried, we've tried with that. an icon to the right of the word, to the left, an arrow. Capitals, lowercase, icons, colors. Like literally, um, and, and we still test it. Mm -hmm. like the, um, we, we never stop. The whole goal is to continually figure out more and more and more. So, so we do our, have Messenger, which is good. Mm -hmm, yep. Um, our average add to cart on our stores is around 10%. We have some that is high as 16%. Um, that's not the weak link. Like you can get your product page uh, dialed in really, really well. Um, as we go through this process, you'll see that um, Shopify's weak link is literally their checkout page, um, which we have solutions for that too. But um, so I don't even know what's styled on. That's it. exactly what I was going to say. I get that they're demonstrating the, the the product and showing them by people wearing them, but styled on Insta, I mean, it could be a slang thing, but chances are a lot of their customers aren't going to know what that means. It'd be, it's instead of trying to be cute, just be use plain language and tell them. Maybe just you and I don't know that. Maybe, maybe so. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe we're just not the, the right demographic for the Demi Lovato sunglasses. I think we should be, but Christina, did you know what styled on Insta means? No. A delay. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take her 30 seconds to Demi answer. Like, it's a mm -hmm. second delay. <laughs> So, okay, so keep going on. Then we got their, <laughs> yeah, same. Now it's going to go back yeah. and forth. So buy one, give one, which is obviously their important thing, which is cool. Yeah, that, that should be, that is way more important to put that above style well, on Insta. Honestly, this because... I, would, I would make an icon out of it and then put that up underneath their buy button along with some other unique identifiers. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then honestly, the reviews too, because we know for a fact by watching um, site videos, uh, literally, 
uh, 95% of the time, uh, the people that scroll down to the reviews, their conversion rate is astronomically better than the people that don't scroll below the fold. So if, if you give them a reason to go to the reviews and look, and that's why we put the answers and questions and things like that. Like our goal is to get people to figure it out. Now this, the, their reviews, this is an outstanding job of making it look like Amazon. Um, without fail, Amazon styled reviews, meaning the gold stars and, and all that stuff has worked significantly better than any other style of review. Okay, blending them into your site doesn't work. Making them look just like Amazon reviews is the best. Also including pictures helps as well. But what I'm digging is the whole verified buyer thing. Yeah, I like how, I actually like that people are gonna rate how their face and mm -hmm. size and their shape. Because they're helping it request what they need information. And this is another thing. Sunglasses are one of those things that are very um, objective about how you've, is that the word? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, like you're, Matt and I could buy the same set of Wayfarers, uh, you know, Ray-Bans, and they're gonna, we're gonna think totally different about how they fit my face, how they fit his face. And when we go, when we go buy sunglasses, it's, it's intimidating because you're like, man, there's so many to try on. I have to figure this out. My face is this. My face is that. So by uh, these people structuring their face and their review is but really what, good. Yeah, what Diff has done though to make that, in, they've basically pre-populated a review form for people that says, hey, give us this information in your review. So because they know that it's going to help make the sale, right? Yeah. Um, I think this, they've done a great this job. This is here. awesome. This should definitely be higher up on the page. Mm -hmm. Like this is way more important than uh, whatever the Insta. Styled on Insta? Styled on Insta. Like that big deal. Like this right here is actually answering a buyer question. Yeah. The only thing that could make this better is if they, over to the, the right, they had the picture of the person wearing the sunglasses like they've got up top like and maybe they do on or some of an example of like around round, what, what round small what round medium mm -hmm. looks like something visual yeah like there we go yeah so some did submit yeah, yeah. so that, that that's perfect I mean yeah. ideally I'd like to see it over on the right just for it's a formatting thing just because it would not expand the page so much and make it more readable because you're looking this way. This is better than 99% of sites out there. Oh man, as this far is, as reviews. They've this done a review, really good job. Yeah. So guys, yeah. if you're looking for a review format to copy, yeah. this is it. This yeah, is killer. For sure it'll work. All right. So now we've, we've done the product page. Now guys, there's, we're only scratching the surface here on what we've talked about. It may seem like we've been talking for a long time and we have, and there's a lot of things we've touched on. You can talk longer. I know that. I totally can. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the, just these little tiny changes that we're talking about would make a huge and, and uh, like literally overnight lift in their site. I mean, within, of difference. Yes, within, yeah, within of hours even. So let's go ahead. Matt likes the purple ones. So we're going to add to cart. Let's see where we're at next. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So now okay, so. there's, yeah, this literally, um, they could probably increase their conversion rate, um, by multiples of percent. The reason why I say that is literally I don't even have an add to cart button here. Um, there we go, way down there. No, that's adding an uh, that's no adding kidding. another item to that's the an, cart. That's an Keep order going. button. Yeah. Keep Holy going. moly. Keep going. There's your checkout. And it's so literally you have to go through all those things. And remember what we said about hierarchy of focus. How much cognitive load have you created? When you go down back around your go back down to your cart like scroll way down and you have all that other information before they can add this before they can actually yeah. check out we have to talk a lot about this real quick because there's a whole bunch of yeah they're literally what the good thing is like again it's a great site they sell a lot of sunglasses number one on on shopify, shopify. but like we know for a fact that uh you could probably double their conversion rate by treating their client better. Whoa. So literally, rather than forcing them to go through those other things. Um, so you can change quantity and the yeah. price doesn't change. That's no. a huge no-no. Yeah. No. So they're, they're going, okay, now I get two pairs for 60 bucks, hit the checkout. And then their price doubles. And, and what then the they're going to abandon. Yep. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do here on this cart that would make it a lot better. And So guys, what, what, you're, what we can tell, we haven't seen their stats. I'll but, guarantee it. Yeah, so yeah. You, you have the, the three core, let's go over here where you can see it, three core uh, quick metrics, right, on Shopify, right? Yeah. You have your, your add to cart, initiate or checkout, initiate and, checkout purchase. and purchase. So your cart, 
I guarantee they may have, have a higher add to cart, but you're going to see a huge drop when they hit the cart. Like that number could go, let's say it was at 10, you're probably at two yeah. from, from this page to the initiate checkout because it's so bad. You're forcing, you're forcing them to go through all this other stuff. Yeah. And you're doing it at the wrong spot. So number one, so, I guess just list a few things, right? So uh, no one, add to cart buttons. Well, yeah, there's there's no add to cart buttons. I'll about talk about the, the uh, to go quite a ways. bump in a second. What, what we consider a browser is somebody that's on your site at any point up until they add something to the cart. Once they put it in the cart, they, they've become a shopper and you don't want to do anything, what, anything at all to... In, to Indeed. interrupt that yeah. experience, you want them to buy it as quickly as a possible. Customer, and then you have lots of marketing opportunities to give them the cleaning care. Yeah. Like that's an eight dollar thing. Maybe they're going to make five, six bucks on it. Like they can totally get that post purchase. Yeah, they like get they it. They do not need to do it at in the best. Cart. A two dollar AOV boost, maybe off that one product. I would love to know the stats on how many people click that add to cart, like you were about to do thinking they're oh, checking out I'm checking out and literally it added something else changes well see if it actually even updates their price because their card doesn't doesn't seem to be no nope, so it doesn't it just adds a keep going it does, okay, totally. so it does. It does totally. but then you still again have to scroll past more stuff in order to figure it out there's still not an add to card button above the fold or uh, a proceed to checkout button yeah yeah. And that's the thing, um, that verbiage is important too. Yes. It should means. never be um, checkout, it should proceed to checkout. And the button, sh again, should be colored so that it's, it stands out. And then a, a, we have two buttons, above and below um, At everything. this point, they've already, they already have buyer intent. So what you're telling them at this point, check out within four and a half seconds, products frequently sell out. Again, like um, they're probably not going to believe you. And it keeps resetting too, because yeah. like I, when I re click the add the thing, it went back up in time. Yeah. Um, so the, another thing, guys, this what this add a little something. Uh, this is a in cart upsell, right? This is basically a way to try to boost your AOV, your average order value, which is one of the most important metrics you can focus on the front end of your Shopify business because it allows you to buy more traffic, right? The higher your AOV the more you can afford to spend on traffic, right? right? Makes sense. So, so everybody's, everybody's trying to do AOV. The best place in the world to, to increase AOV is post-purchase, but we know Shopify doesn't allow for very good post-purchase stuff yet, right? Things are in the works. There's some options out there, but they're not ideal. The next thing is, is oh, well, we'll throw it in the cart. And logically, in, or in, it makes sense, okay? So, so here's, the, here's the flow. Let's think about it this way. I've added these sunglasses to my cart. I'm about to, I'm in my cart. I'm about to check out. It makes sense that this is the time to say, hey, what, you want a cleaner? Or you want some spray? I don't think that makes sense. No, but, but, no, but you're a different person. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But as a, as a consumer. consumer and from a, a gener generic marketing perspective, it does make sense because you think it's almost like, would you like fries with that? Yeah. Okay. However, when it comes to e-com and, and a store specifically, all you're doing is creating a distraction or a pattern interrupt that disrupts the buying process. It gives them an opportunity. Every time that you do that, you give them an opportunity to go, yeah, I'll just come back later. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've already put the sunglasses in. I'm ready to check out. And now you're offering me these two other things. Now, I don't know if I want to buy this. Do I have to go back into the store to look at it, to figure it out um, after I'm already in the cart? Well, once I'm in the cart, I'm actually... I put it there because I want to go check out. Now you're distracting me to go look deeper into the store. And that's if I even am interested in this. Very true. So there's lots of reasons so to not do it here. At the same time, Matt and I are fanatical about, Matt, about AOV. We're always doing everything we can. Okay, but we've tested this, again, ridiculous amounts because we need to figure out a way to do AOV as well. And yes, yes. having this in-cart upsell will increase your AOV. You're, you have a little green number on your, on your Shopify dashboard. Everything's going to go up. You're going to be like, yeah, this is working. What you're not noticing, because you can't track it through Shopify, it's got to be through Google Analytics and all the other stuff, is all the other metrics that have been hurt because of that add to cart. So you're, so you're actually causing more damage. You'll have higher AOV, but less completed checkouts, high, lower conversion rate, like all, all these other massive stats that are important will be significantly lower. And the money that you lost by having those numbers reduced is way, like five, 10 times more 
than the gain you get from the little AOV boost by using this cart. Yeah. And the reason we know this is because we've suffered from it. And we get paid by revenue. So Correct. Like we literally track it every single way that we can figure out because the more revenue that we get for the for our partner stores, the more we make. The more we make. So it would make sense if this makes more money, we would say, yeah, put Let's it in card Intel. But it never it has not, worked. It, does it doesn't matter which money. platform you use, which app, which anything, it does not work. And because of that, that's why we actually had, we developed our own solution to the problem because Shopify has its limitations, right? You can't do post-purchase. You can't do traditional order bumps. You can't do in cart. You can, but it doesn't work the right way. So we actually had to develop our own. Uh, I'm going to show you real quick. That's not what this, this call is about, but I'm going to show you just so you know there is an option. Um, so if you go here back on Breath Rocks, right here, this is the ability to add products straight to at the right time. So here, they're looking at the sunglasses, okay? We're looking at the sunglasses, and then it's like, oh, as they scroll, it's like, would you like to add the cleaning kit? Would you like to add the spray? Whatever. And you can have variants and all that stuff, but when they click add to cart, it's automatically added to the cart with them, okay? Now, this is, a, this is not, an, you can't find this app on Shopify. It's not available to the public, but I'm, what I'm showing you here is that so there's a right and a wrong place. There is a, exactly, a right and a wrong place. And if it's, you go, go back to that card for just a second. It's all about presenting the information again and the opportunity at the right time. So the one thing that I want people to understand right here, one, it's very clear how many items they have in their cart. Um, there's n nothing hidden and right away there's an add a cart or there's a proceed to check out. Yep. So literally they do not have to scroll through a whole bunch of stuff to finish the buying process. They can literally do it right there. And if you scroll, you'll actually see another button so they can see what their total is and then they can still check and out. The other thing is, is if I increase, it's going to let me, there you go. It's going to increase the product price right then. Okay, so I know that I doubled my three pack and it's gonna cost me more money. So there's no surprises when I get over to the checkout page and all of a sudden my total is higher than the total was in the cart. Right, you for don't, sure their, that's their a big cart deal. should auto update. So go back okay. to their cart. So sorry guys, didn't wanna just sideline us there. So you can see some marked differences here. Um, yeah, like instead like they have all this stuff around the checkout button rather than you have this many items. I can't see my products anymore either. Cost this much money. Right. So I'm curious, of course, because mobile is obviously one of the most important things. Well, that's a saving grace. At least it's above the fold there. Um, click on the, click on the oh, device. Yeah. To the, this is responsive. Which one do you want to do? I, um, we'll do an X. No, it's not. Okay. So here we go again. You're on a tablet. Yeah. I was on, so on mobile, which obviously a massive amount of their traffic is going to come from, especially with Instagram traffic and all of that. Again, same thing. I have to scroll before I get, not as far at least this time, but still. It doesn't matter. Doesn't, conversion. Yeah, it's going to hurt it. Yep, and they're going to click that add to cart button thinking that that's adding it to their cart. Yeah, dude, I was and, doing it. Which it should be a proceed to check out. But yeah, there's just lots of, there's lots of things here, and we're not doing this to pick on them. Like this, hopefully they watch this and go, oh yeah, this is really good. We need to fix that right away and they'll make more money. Again, you look at their footer, all the social icons. Um, honestly, I do believe that they're crowd and I can make this, uh, it's an assumption, but they probably are very high social media users because they're using influencers. And so the last thing that I would wanna do is put these social media icons all over my site because once you have them to your store, you wanna sell them something not distract them with um, Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram and literally get them to go, oh yeah, I wanna see what my buddy just posted and then leave the site to go do that. So like get rid of all the social icons um, and uh, let them buy something. Okay, um, at this point, let me, let me go to the checkout. But, um, for this, uh, literally, this is the one area that uh, Shopify doesn't give you um, access to unless you're on a Shopify Plus account. Um, there's a few things that a normal user can do, and uh, we can talk about, like right here, go ahead and scroll up. Um, one to, second. 
I'm having a screen issue. Just explain what you're talking about. I can't scroll up anymore. Oh, okay. There's a, well, I can't talk about what I want to show them. Um, the buttons on the site itself. Scroll more. There, there you go. go. So literally what you want is for your site to be congruent from front to back. Um, so far, everything on their site was uh, basically a theme that had black in it. So now all of a sudden I'm on the checkout page and it feels like I went somewhere else. Um, it doesn't match. So all they have to do literally is go into their settings and they can change the color of this button to be black to highlight these different boxes to be black so that it matches the rest of the site and it feels the same from the front to the back of the site. There's also a multitude of other things that we can do on this particular site. You could probably actually just add something to the cart in uh, Breath Rocks and then go over and take a look at it. Yeah, just see what a, what an, a fancy one looks like. Yeah, and this is uh, Breath Rocks is one of our partner stores and they do not have a Shopify Plus. It's literally um, just a regular Shopify account. And if you look, there's multiple differences here. See the breadcrumbs, there's the highlights on the different fields are color matched. If you scroll up some more, you can see now there's icons below the buttons. There's reviews over to the right. Um, there's a lot of things here that we've done. Um, we have an app that does this and I'm not trying to sell you the app right now, but literally it gives you the ability to go ahead and customize your, your checkout page, which is something that Shopify doesn't really give you access to. But what it does is there's all kinds of trust elements here that will help, help your checkout perform better. And you can get, you can get this stuff done and, and actually deal with the liquid code um, if you get Shopify Plus, what, $2,000 a month. Yeah, so what he's saying, like with Shopify Plus, they unlock the checkout ability or the ability in checkout for you to edit the code. They don't help you do anything. They just yeah, un they make don't it. even tell you what it is. No. I, I would honestly be willing to bet money that uh, Diffyware is on Shopify Plus um, just for the savings and merchant and fees. fees. Absolutely. But yeah, you can tell that literally, um, go back to their um, checkout, it's never been touched. Um, it is literally exactly what comes bone stock out of the box. You want to talk about even, these too? even the color. Yeah, the other thing is, say for example, someone does say, okay, I want to play with PayPal. Um, they'll click on PayPal, get all of that stuff verified, and if they decide to leave, you have no information to try to get them to come back to your store. So what we do is we suppress the payment buttons and tell the payment page. Because what happens is if you click on PayPal, you will verify your PayPal and then you'll literally come back to this page and have to enter all this information and then do it again on the PayPal page and it'll just verify it real quick and then you go. But what's better is to suppress those, have them and by suppress he's meaning make it so they don't even show up. Yeah, they don't show up to the payment page. Correct. Like they're not ready to pay yet. You get their information and when they go to the payment page, literally um, they click the PayPal button, it'll verify it and then you can check out immediately rather than go leave site, come back, then fill out the information, and then when you get to the payment page, you again have to click PayPal. Um, again, it comes down to hurts conversions. Yeah, presenting the right information at the right time. Revenue optimization is not about um, adding most of the time to the site. It's more about streamlining, and again, it's all about the customer journey. Identifying every point of conflict or disruption in that customer journey and doing everything you can to smooth it out. I mean, the, 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 the dumb example of it would be if you're trying to push, a, push like a wheelbarrow or something across a whole bunch of broken rocky ground, okay? And it, there's all these different bumps and you're just like going like crazy like this. And then instead, Every before you push that- an opportunity to tip it. Yeah, exactly. Before, and tipping it means they're leaving, right? So before you do that, you go through and you identify all those rough patches and you smooth them out. Okay, and then all of a sudden, you've, you've cut down your workload, you're much more successful, you can do a whole lot more trips with the wheelbarrow and everything works way better, okay? How many more people are gonna make it through on a smooth ground than they are with Correct. all those, we call them friction points. Essentially, you're trying to remove the friction so it's very smooth for them to come through and uh, have a good experience with your site. And it's not just, it's not strictly um, so that you're just making more sales, it's so that they have a better experience, so that they trust you more. Like you've got rid of all these friction points. Do you think that they're not gonna be more likely to refer your site 
Uh, some people are going to buy the sunglasses regardless because they really want them. But if your site was super easy to deal with and you didn't hit them with sale after sale after sale to finish what they're trying to do, don't you think that they're going to be more likely to refer you to more customers than if the process was hard and clunky? Um, they're going to be glad they got the sunglasses, but they're certainly not going to tell anybody anything good about your site. And along with that, guys, like I just want to reiterate and beat a dead horse is that these aren't guesses, okay? This is what we do. I mean, we have probably 500 hours a week between us and our staff that do nothing, specifically our staff. Matt and I do other things, obviously, but our staff, their entire job, their entire purpose for being a part of Build, Grow, Scale is to provide revenue optimization to clients. We have our own developers, our own uh, programmers, everything, so that we can test and adapt and r roll out new changes and all those kind of things. That's why we have these apps, because we had to build them ourselves to solve needs that Shopify was yeah, we not don't sell doing. Them. Like we, we yeah, they're not available to sell. They're not on the app store. Um, we literally build them because we get paid more uh, when we make our, makes us, stores our jobs sell better more. And yeah, and, it, and if it makes it easier for the customer, and we do that because then they'll have a better experience and in the end, like everyone wins. Yeah. The store owner wins. We so win. everything we showed you today and when it comes down to, you know, DiffiWare and like all these different optimizations and this thought process of revenue optimization as a holistic approach to e-com and all these things you can fix and all these things that Diff should fix. Okay. Again, remember that it, everything we're saying is coming from a foundation of ridiculous amounts of data that we've interpreted, we've used across all these different sites that's allowing us to pick apart things on this site. Also remember that we would never actually make any of these changes we're suggesting to this site without first having our track, our Google Analytics tracking and Google Tag Manager stuff set up so that we can analyze the changes that we do make and make sure they are wins and you know we can everything's tracked. Okay. A couple other things too, like literally, like we want the site owner to make these. Like they don't need to pay us to do it. That would be awesome. But if they don't, like we're happy to share we share this information. This is out on Facebook Live, like this is stuff that you can go do to your store yeah. and make more money, like for free. Like you're not paying us to do this. Like we literally want to help you. Um, we're not for everyone. The ones that we are for, cool. They can get a hold of us. The ones that aren't, like this is yeah. good information. Like it, this is not, yeah, like he said, it's this is not specific to diff eyewear or only eyewear companies or only things that go on your body. I don't care if you're selling nutraceuticals, pet harnesses. Um, home goods, canvas prints, doesn't matter. Everything we talked about here and on our Kylie Jenner critique and on any of the other critiques we've done and are going to do, these are principles, okay? They're, yeah. These are things that you can apply to any site, any industry, any niche, any anything you want to think about. Yeah, they're not tactics. No. So what we're telling you right now is literally based off of buying behavior and tests, like lots of tests. Like it, it, There's no way that a single store owner could test even – these people have this much traffic can test the amount of things that we test because we have 13 sites that we work on. So they can literally, we can do that times 13 um, with traffic. Yep. All and then take the things. winners and test the winners across all 13 to see how they perform across different industries, different sales cycles, all that stuff. Yeah. So when we find a winner, it's a real winner. It's yeah. not a, mm, I think that one yeah. we, we know for a fact. Okay. So guys um, on this, I see a lot in the comments like, hey, can you critique my site? Can you do this? And we already knew this because on the last critique we did, we did, we had people blowing us up, blowing up our support desk saying, hey, how do you critique my site? The public sites are cool, but how do, you, how do I get you to do mine? But you know what? I'd rather you not do it live for the world to see things like that. So um, we spoke, Matt and I spoke and talked with our team. And you know, we do have some slack in our calendar right now. So we're going to you know, extend some site critique options to you guys real quick. It's nothing fancy. It's not all pr like a crazy pitch or anything, anything like that. But let me just show you what we got. So in case this is of interest to you, you can take advantage of it. All right. So let me share my screen real quick. So you should be seeing a big Build, Grow, Scale logo on the screen right now. And if you don't know, Build, Grow, Scale is the company that Matt and I own. And it's the company that's responsible for all this crazy e-commerce awesomeness. So people are saying, hey, I love this. I want to get my store critiques just like this. How can I work with you guys? Or basically, how can I get you guys to rip apart my store so that I know what to improve, right? You're probably thinking that exact thing. Now, after talking about it with our team, we figured out something pretty cool because we've done a few of these public critiques already. And, you know, we've had people ask and we had to figure out a solution because we didn't honestly, we didn't have one. Now we do. So let me show you what it is. 
Now, we actually call a formal critique a store audit, which is when we take a page-by-page, deep-dive look at all aspects of your store to figure out the good, the bad, and the ugly, much like you saw us do on this public critique, right? Now, the only difference would be that we would do yours in private so that you don't have to share your store with the world. And now we've decided to make some time available in our team schedule to do private Shopify store audits for you. So here's the details. First thing to understand is that this is not a normal service offered by Build, Grow, Scale. We usually only do this kind of stuff for our clients and our Ecom Insider members. So it's not something we have ever offered publicly. But we've decided to open up 25 Shopify store audits to the public to see how this goes. And then if it goes well, we will possibly turn this into a regular thing. Now, if the link below in the description is still working, then there are still audits available. But if the link's down, well, then we've pulled the offer. For now, though, there are 25 audits available where we will do a full deep dive audit on your store with you live on a call where you will get to interact with one of our revenue optimization experts personally to go over your store in detail. The next thing to understand is that this is by application only. Now don't freak out, it's not some crazy thing. It's just some basic questions telling us about your store and business so that we know for a fact that if we do a store audit for you, that it would be of benefit to you. Meaning that we will only do the audit if we know that it will help you. Now we do that because there are some stores out there that we can't help. Not many of them, but they are there. And if we aren't a right fit for you, we'll tell you that right up front and not waste any of your time. So again, this is for 25 stores, and we are going to ask that you apply to be considered for one of the audits. Now, after applying, if your store is accepted and we agree to do an audit for you, the cost to you would be $100. Nothing crazy, especially when you consider that our clients pay us a percentage of their gross revenue every single month. So this 100 bucks, it's a drop in the bucket compared to that. And all we are trying to do here is cover a portion of our revenue optimization experts time while they do the deep dive audit on your store with you. Now, that's all there is to it. If you'd like us to do a private store audit with you to help you optimize your store and you're okay with the $100 cost of the audit, then please click the link in the description or the link right here on the screen to apply. Either link will take you straight to the application for the Shopify store audit. Once you fill out your application, our team will review the application and then reach out to you with either a yes, we can help you or no, we can't. If we can help you, which in 99% of the cases we can, and you agree to pay the $100 fee for the audit, you'll be able to then schedule a live video store audit call with our team. And then we'll dive in and we'll help you get your store rocking. So click the link here on the screen or the link down in the description below and fill out your application now. So again, that's the whole pitch. So this was really a, pr- a free value thing. We just wanted to you know, really go deep dive into Diff Eyewear and show you guys some really cool stuff. But at the same time, people do ask us all the time about these site audits. Matt, Matt gets hit up all the time. So do I, so does Christina. And they're like, hey, how do you, I get you to look at my site? So that's why we made this offer for you guys. Again, a hundred bucks. I guarantee you, if you take us up on it, you will get ridiculous amounts. Uh, I don't want to say 10X because everybody says 10X, but you will get way more value out of the call than the hundred bucks that it will cost you.